So Fanimation fans are the ones that we picked for our forever home. And it's partly because they were on the Energy Star Best of 2020. We went looking for fans that were not only very beautiful, but also we're gonna be the top of the line as far as efficiency. The baseline for how awesome they perform is their work per the energy that you put into them. So these fans are all 420 CFM per watt. There's really not anything else that you're using in your house that's pulling that small of an amount of energy. So I'm gonna have these all ideally on low speed all the time. You can see uh, that it's modular. So we've got the blades, the fan blades come in a separate box. This is the fan motor and all the trim pieces and everything that kind of form the central shaft of the fan. You can see here that they're describing the down rod that you would wanna pick for this. We have a nine foot ceiling in this bedroom. This is our master suite. And we need no down rod at all in this suite. In fact, in general, I would say I overestimated how far I wanted to drop these fans down. Even in my daughter's room, which has got an 11 foot peak at the ceiling, I only brought it down 18 inches. And we've got, a, it's a sloped ceiling in there. So I thought maybe I would want it to come lower, but it, the way that it feels and the way that it looks and the way that you think it's gonna do those things is different. That's an aesthetic thing. It's not like a science -y thing, but I'll just say that that was something that surprised me. Obviously, when you open up anything that's gonna be a complicated piece of equipment, and I will say this is not complicated. This is something you could totally do yourself. You don't need to hire a contractor to do this for you. You're gonna get a bunch of pieces of paper. Um, I do care about pieces of paper and you should read the instructions, but I have done this six times already. So I'm gonna do that right now. Uh, because you don't need to watch me read. So everything comes in two little trays. Here's your fan motor housing, and you can see it's got this set of wires coming out of it. We're gonna deal with these in just a minute. We have the main trim that's gonna cover the top part of the pole over here, and this has got the remote control devices in it. And the wiring for this is actually really beautifully simple, which I was very happy about because I was worried for a second that maybe I had not had the electricians do the right thing. This whole thing right here is um, code in Canada. It's a safety, this is a, called a lag screw, and it's a massive structural screw that you put into the ceiling and then make sure to safety strap it, just like a bookshelf that you would kind of strap to the wall just in case it ever tips over. This is something that fan manufacturers are now including, just in case the fan falls out of the ceiling, You've got this thing uh, suspending it. It should not be falling out of the ceiling, but I don't, I don't know. I'm putting stuff up because I, I want my kids to be safe. So this is where we're gonna start. So we've got all these wires. These wires are very long because if you did use a six foot down rod on this thing, these are made to at least be able to do that for you. So this is how long you've got. I'm not gonna need most of this. Okay, so the ball that's gonna go inside the cage comes off and there's a little post. And likewise, we make this naked. So now I've just got the post itself. I'm gonna put this set of wires through this. Now one of these is a safety cable. As you'd probably suspect, since this thing is gonna be moving as its job, that's the only thing that it's designed to do. The amount of things on this machine that are designed to tighten everything down is a lot. So you will be doing a lot of tightening. And we bring our little, the little safety pin through there. And then tighten these back down. Screws. Okay, so now this isn't going anywhere. Now, I'm gonna cut these wires short. I need to keep about six inches, they say six to nine inches free. So there's that. This is not an electrical wire. So if you try to do what I just did with this, it's gonna be difficult. You can use these snips, but you're gonna to need to really work at it. It's stainless steel safety wire. So it's, it's like cable. So there's probably dozens of little pieces of 
wire inside of it. So you get it chew, chew, chew through it. You can hear. There you go. When you get the fan out, you're gonna see what all these wires are for, but they power different things inside the fan. These are for the fan itself, and these are for the uh, light, which we do not have on this one because we didn't need it in this room. For those of you who don't know, these are called wire strippers. It's like a multi-tool for electricians. And the tool has instructions on it, so it tells you what size hole you're using for which gauge wire. And if, if you've worked with wire a few times, then you start to get a feel for what gauge is what, but also it'll tell you on the wire itself. This is 22 gauge wire right here, and then this is a slightly thicker gauge, which means a smaller number. Okay, so now that these are all exposed, I'm gonna twist them just to make sure that they're ready to be attached together. This piece goes down to cover the stuff on the actual fan motor. So this is the beautiful part about the installation of this. This is the remote control. So you've got a switch, um, obviously, that's gonna turn the fan on and off. But all the fine tuning, where in a normal fan that you would just get off the shelf, you have the two silly chain things that you're constantly you know, bumping up out of the way and they get wrapped up around the fan. This is a wireless control. And so the wireless is gonna communicate with this. And what you need to do before you forget and put this into your fan and then try and control it is you need to tune them to the same frequency. So I'm gonna do that right now before I forget. That makes it really easy to retrofit this. So if you have an older home and you wanna get new modern fans like these, you can, and it's not, um, not impossible because you don't need to wire anything specially. So you take the remote control out of the little case. This is what's gonna be mounted on the wall. So this funky thing is the receiver and it's got a set of little tabs here that you build the code into that matches the one that's on the back of the remote control. So you just need to know, I, one person should probably do everything in the house, but I know which combinations I've done so far. So I'm gonna do, there are five pins. I'm having four and five on, and they both need to be to the same frequency. Don't leave it on the default, because then if you install all your fans, you do one thing with one of the remote controls and it'll control all the fans in the entire house. So this fan is the Wrap Custom fan, that's the name of it. And it comes with three blades. And then we also have the cap that goes on the bottom that would replace, if you got a light kit, that would go where this goes. So this is just a, a cap that'll go on there. So now I've got the cage attached to the uh, outlet box, which is in the ceiling, and that outlet box is attached to the structure. And that's really important because this thing does weigh something. It's not gonna be maxing out the weight of what the outlet box can take, which is 35 pounds. And I know that it's attached to structure that is also itself very solid. And so I am going to skip the safety lag screw step of chaining all this together and then putting this here so that just in case this were to rip free, it would not fall into the room. This would need to go into a ceiling joist, which is all the way out here, three or four inches away from my fan. And I'm gonna be annoyed if I look up from my bed and I keep seeing this screw sticking out in the middle of nowhere. You can paint it. And there are ways to plan for this earlier, but honestly, this is more than enough. This is code in other countries, not here. So I'm going to skip this um, because I do not believe it's important uh, in this case. Okay, and you can see it swings. It likes to swing this way. It won't swing the other way. And that's how you would then put it on a slanted ceiling is it, it lines up perfectly with this screw up there. Now I'm gonna put my wireless receiver 
into the cage as well. And you've got this little antenna here. This all gets tucked inside this piece of trim later. Okay, so this is my stainless steel safety cable, which I am not using, I've already explained that, so I'm gonna tuck that over here. And all the rest of these, you need to do something about. So the first and most complicated thing is you've got ground wires. You've got one, two, three, four total. And those all need to be connected to the ground for the house. So you're gonna be connecting five wires together. All the rest of these wires, this might look like a big mess, but they have little labels on them that say what they do and what they're supposed to be going to. And everything is color coded. So you just attach gray to gray, yellow to yellow, red to red, and so on and so forth. Not that hard. One thing that's really helpful about doing all of this yourself and not paying someone to do it is that now I know how exactly this thing fits together and what it's made of so that when it breaks someday, even if it's in 20 years, I know how to get in here and fix this. It's very empowering. One thing to be careful of is that there's a black wire here and a black wire that's got a white stripe that you might not see on it. The black wire is the one that says ACN Live or ACNL. That's the one that you need to attach. I just made that mistake. And it would potentially, if you screw this up, you might pop the uh, receiver electronics, which is not good because then you gotta get another one. The fan has power. And then there's two wires here, blue and black with a white stripe that say for light. If you do not have a light, you need to cap over these on their own. And that might not have been made perfectly clear to you in reading the instructions. By the way, even if you did use the safety uh, screw, there is no way with the design of this particular fan, the wrap custom, there's no way to get it to fit underneath the canopy, uh, which is this part right here. It would have to be sticking out into space. So I did use it in some cases, especially in my girl's room where I don't know what they're, they might be doing jackass stuff in there. But uh, here, not too important. Um, but the biggest thing is you need to tuck all this stuff up close to the body of the fan because now we have to attach it here. In case it's not obvious to you, you do not put the blades on before, look at, look at where I am. So don't put the blades on until the very, very end. If you had dropped it, blades come flying off, big problem. This is called the motor guard, what I'm taking out of here. They're little pieces that just protect from vibration during shipping. They come with all these little tiny screws. Don't drop the screws into the fan housing like I just did. And if you do, Call Grace, because she knows how to get that stuff out of there. Very nicely, Fanimation puts a sticker on the fan blades that says this side up, so you don't make the mistake. So in general with machines, you wanna try and put all of the screws in loosely just so that the thing is there, but because it needs to be balanced, how you tighten everything down becomes very important. So this needs to be tightened on the bottom first, and then you come back and tighten the top screws. Also, this may look like wood, it's not wood. Um, it's very beautiful and it's really hard for even me to tell the difference. But if it was actually wood, it would expand and contract at different rates and it might be hard to tell what different pieces of wood, this piece, this piece, this piece are gonna do in different conditions. And that would all be kind of against the purpose of trying to make a super efficient fan. Also wood is gonna be a lot heavier than plastic. Last piece, the cap is magnetically attached. Done. Then you turn on the breaker to activate power turn on the wall switch, and you press learn on the remote control. 
The fan then goes into this high speed mode to make sure that it's properly balanced and that it's, everything is operating as supposed to be. And you're all set. So then you just mount this on the wall wherever you want or just put it on your bedside table and you're done. And now we have a perfectly silent and also very efficient way to just keep the house as comfortable as possible. Please do make sure that you subscribe to our channel to learn a lot more about this house and about all the ways that you can test and scientifically tune home performance in all areas. Like and subscribe please as well. Tune in next time.